Okay, my name is uh, Rick Patsman. I'm a volunteer here up at uh, Knife River Indian Village. Today we're going to talk about a primitive weapon known as the atlatl. You can also pronounce it atlatl, either is perfectly fine. And what it is, it's a simple tool that hunters used thousands and thousands of years ago to help them throw a spear. And what it essentially is, is an extension of their arm. So they're able to throw it at uh, much more speed and force. It would be similar to the chucket that people use for when you're throwing a tennis ball for your dog. Use this because it's easier on the arm and you can throw it a lot farther than you can just with your, with your regular arm. Um, I got into the Addle Addles about three years ago. My wife that does the Earth Lodge interpretation, she brought me up here and um, so I got to see the presentation. A fellow named uh, John Moykin, he, uh, I guess we could call him uh, Mr. Adelatl of Knife River Indian Village. He uh, very knowledgeable about the history of the Adelatl and he has made numerous Adelatls himself. And really what I'm presenting here today is information that uh, was passed on from him, which I uh, really appreciate. Now the atlatl, think a little bit about what that word means. Well, it means spear thrower. It's an ancient word. The atlatls were found really all throughout the world, essentially in almost every continent in the world. And uh, they were found in archeological digs, you know, and uh, they date back thousands and thousands of years. Let's take a little trip back in time. Uh, let's go back past when compound bows were invented, before guns were invented, you know, before the bow and arrow. And back when uh, early man was hunting. And in this area, you know, they would be hunting in tall grass prairies, kind of like you see around here and whatnot. So they were able to surround their game, sneak up on it. And when they went out and, and to hunt, they usually went out in hunting parties with, with a number of braves. It could have been a dozen or more. And what they would do is they would sneak up and surround the prey and then uh, use uh, the atlatl to throw the spears, you know, at their prey. We normally think you just about, you know, hunting buffalo, but really in this area, uh, granted the buffalo was very abundant and very important to their culture because they could use just about everything from a buffalo. But they also hunted deer, antelope, uh, small game such as rabbits. And there were some bear and elk that they also could could go after. So there was a wide variety of uh, animals that they could hunt. But when it came to hunting the bison, when uh, they would sneak up on them and they would throw their spear at them, you know, do you think the bison would just kind of stand around and take it? Mm, probably not, you know, he probably wouldn't like that. And they would uh, tend to charge the, the hunters. Now the fastest man in the world can run about 26, 27 miles an hour. Well, a buffalo can run 30 miles an hour or maybe even fa a little faster. So in most of the cases, the buffalo would win. Now, what the atlatl did is that instead of getting so close, they could stay back, you know, 20, 30, 40 yards or more, and uh, it would give them a little bit more distance and safety when they were pursuing that big game. Another game that they would hunt that you really don't think of much would be birds. And that would be, you know, for example, geese migrating through in the spring or the fall. And if they saw a flock of geese setting out, you know, uh, out in the, the field and whatnot, the hunters could take their atlatls and throw those spears up 
into the air and come down on them and hopefully they'd get lucky and, and hit them. So that was another way that they could use the atlatl for hunting. Well next let's take a, a look at the spear that they would have been using. To start with, uh, this is one that I made. Uh, the shafts they would make out of and and then in this area next to the river they could find uh, willow saplings or cottonwood saplings. If uh, they weren't by a river with a lot of trees like that and they were up in the plains around wetlands they could use uh, the shafts from a grass known as Phragmites and that's a really tall grass and they could make their shafts out of that but the problem with that was they weren't very durable and they would last two or three times and then they would fall apart. So they really wanted to use something that was stronger. And in this case, this is a, a cottonwood sapling and I've taken it and I've whittled off the bark and you can see the, the burn marks. And what I did is I took and I heated it over flames and when you heat it, it becomes soft and I could shape it and straighten it. And then when it cools, it stays in that position. So that's what I did to try to get a nice straight shaft. As far as the tip goes, the arrowheads were made from Knife River Flint. And that's, uh, the flint was found in this area and it was very popular amongst tribes, you know, all over the country. And, and tribes would travel hundreds and hundreds of miles to come up here and trade for the flint because it was it worked so well for their for the arrowheads and they would chip and shape an arrowhead it's called uh, flint napping and they would shape this arrowhead and the leading edge here is very sharp almost like a razor blade and they would get the shape that they wanted then what they would do on this part of the shaft they would cut a groove in there they would put the arrowhead in and they would essentially glue it with uh, a material called pine pitch. And that's just a real sticky material that's made from the sap of pine trees. So they would glue it in and then they would take and wrap it with sinew. Now sinew is a thread that they would get from uh, the muscle tendon of a bison and very strong material and they would wrap it to uh, secure that arrowhead onto the spear. One of the things that they would do is that with their spears, when they would go on a hunting trip, it would be really difficult for them to carry, you know, a dozen or more, you know, maybe two dozen spears with them. They'd have an armful of them. So what they would do is they would carry just two or three. And if you notice on this tip, the way that worked is that when they would hit a bison or whatever their prey was, this was really loose. So the shaft would, when they hit it, the shaft would fall out. They could retrieve, retrieve the, the shaft and then they would have an ex, another one. In fact, they would probably carry, you know, maybe a dozen or more, a couple dozen. It was really easy to carry a lot of the tips. And then they could just reuse the shaft. The other thing that uh, you see on the spears is that as with the atlatl and that ability to throw this spear at such great distances, they wanted to come up with a way to make them fly more true, a lot straighter, and that's where the fletching came about. Now this one here is fletched with turkey feathers Actually, it was a turkey I shot with my bow. And again, the feathers are put on using sinew. They're wrapped on and you can see how it's wrapped going up the feather to the end. And that's how they secured the feathers to the shaft. Now you'll also call, instead of just a spear, you'll also see these called or hear them called darts. And the reason they call them darts is because a dart tends to have 
a heavier end on the, the point than on the back where the fletching is. And a spear is known to be the same weight from one end to the other. But for all practical purposes, you know, we just, you know, use the, the terminology spear. Next here, we're gonna talk about the actual addle addle. Now this style, if uh, you were coming here for Lifeways and we had, you know, all the, the kids from the various schools come, they would get to throw a spear with an addle addle. And this is the style they would use. Um, the reason that we use this style, it's because of this rest. It looks like kind of bunny ears. And the, the spear will set in here and it's a lot easier to, to hold the spear in the, in the addle addle because of this rest. Okay, so it makes it a lot easier for, for beginners to, to throw one. Now there's all kinds of different shape sizes and whatnot, but they're basically, you know, the principle is all the same. There's, a, we call this one a hammer style because you're holding it like a hammer and when you throw it, you snap your wrist just like you would if you were hammering or pounding something, okay? This is another style. This is very simple that they would have just cut out of a tree branch and they have just a, a hole. They don't have the spur on the end like that other one did. A lot of these would have holes cut. It would be wider and holes cut. So when you held it, you put your fingers through and instead of like the hammer motion, you're snapping your wrist this way. Okay, they refer to these as the basket style. This is another one that it, it no longer has the, the rest, but it has a, a groove that it will sit in. The advantage on this one here is that you can take your, your spear and set it on there and it'll slide right back and it's easy to get it into the, the spur. This would be more traditional. This one, it has uh, leather loops here that allows you to put your fingers through, makes it a little bit easier to hold it nice and tight, okay? One thing you see on this one that you haven't seen on the other one is this stone, okay? The advantage of having the stone here, there's actually two reasons why you would put a stone on there. And one reason is, is that when you're holding your the addle addle with the spear on it this is a lot heavier than this end so it tends to want to push down well with this stone on the addle addle it balances it and this stone could be placed anywhere along the shaft of the addle addle and it's just a personal preference on who's who's making it a lot of them would put them up towards the end and that would give you a little more force when you're swinging to be able to throw them a little bit farther. So that would be more consistent uh, of a traditional one. You know, the addle addles can be really quite crude. Uh, some of them were made from just a branch where you had a small branch coming off and the spur would just be whittled out of the small branch coming off and then the rest would be on the larger branch. So. What could also be used, this is just a piece of wood or, you know, part of a branch, but they, what they also could use is the tip of a antler from a deer. The technique is, essentially, is that if we're throwing at that target, we would stand so we're facing away from it, this direction. We would, it helps to put your other arm out so you can kind of balance yourself. And then you want to hold this back and fairly level. And when you come through, you're going to snap your wrist. Now, it's a lot easier said than done, especially on a windy day. <laughs> so we'll, we'll try one here and, 
and and see uh, see how it works out. It was close. <laughs> okay, so the technique then is you want to keep this fairly level. Pull your arm back. You're going to aim at your target, and when you come through, you're going to snap your wrist like this. Kind of show how far they uh, they penetrate. So this one penetrated about that much, and it doesn't have a tip on it. Okay, let's say we're gonna throw one out at a flock of geese. If uh, we had a flock of geese standing out in that field what they would do, the hunting party would all get ready to throw and then they would throw at the same time up in the air and hopefully they would get lucky and be able to, to hit a goose. So I'll, uh, okay, I'll, I'll see how this one goes. So a lot farther than I could throw with just my arm. Here we go. 